All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. Hello. Uh, again, we are here. Cocktails and conversation. Uh, I'm Charles, and over here is Jess. And today uh, we have our, our guest with us, PJ Powers. So, raise a glass. Hello, hello, hello. So, Jess, what are you drinking? It looks a little bit different. You got a, a different glass and so, a different mixture. Well, so I'm I'm very pleased. I think this is the one like technical highball cocktail glass I own, which I got at a school function of all things. Um, it it is, I believe, a South Side. So it's simple syrup, gin, lemon juice, uh, topped. Oh, and mint leaves, topped with ice, and then added club soda. So. I commented to you before, I think all of my drinks just have a variation on the theme of clear liquor and citrus, basically. So I'm, I'm identifying this in myself right now, as this is my uh, inclination. So what are you gentlemen drinking? I'll start with you, Charles. What's in your cup? So uh, I'm, drinking, I'm drinking some, some red wine, uh, Toscana red wine, uh, Sangiovese. And it is from... Trader Joe's. It's a nice little, you know, five, six dollar holler. Because uh, quarantine is like, I'm not going to go out often, but when I do go out, I need to come back with crates of wine. And so the best way to do that and not go broke is to just go Trader Joe's and, and just find those $4.99, $5.99 gems. That's what I'm drinking. I mean, what about I you? Think it's more, I think it's more questionable that there was a run on toilet paper and not bottles of wine at Trader Joe's when this all went down. Serious. Which is just occurring to me now. Like that seems like the more pandemic-oriented need when you're isolating. But anyway, yeah, PJ, what do you got? Uh, I I just dashed and grabbed uh, some wine. So I, this is a little French Grenache. I I had dreams and visions of making a proper cocktail because I I felt like I needed to rise to the to the challenge of the the title. And just looking at your title card as I was waiting for this to start. And staring at that delicious, what I guess is an old fashioned, made me so thirsty. It made me a little sad that I'm just doing wine. But, but as I shared with you guys before, I've had one of those days that has just been back to back Zoom since 9 a.m. So uh, making a cocktail just wasn't in the cards today. I yeah. heard that. Well, let's let's do a toast to cocktails and conversation. So, PJ, thank Cheers. you for joining Cheers. us. Here's here's to conversation. My pleasure. Cheers. Thanks for having me. So yeah, I mean, I guess PJ, where do we where do we start? What what can I say about what is your life in these quarantine COVID quarters that we find ourselves in, and you know, staring at each other between four four corners of a screen or whatever? Uh, it's it's so different day by day and week by week, which I know sounds absurd because it feels like nothing has been different for, for the last 11 weeks. It's like every day is Monday, um, you know, ever since March 12th. But I don't know, the, the ups, and, ups and downs of feeling hopeful and then feeling the opposite of that uh, has been uh, really a, a roller coaster ride. Uh, I mean, going back 11 weeks to March 12th, uh, it was the day I, I'm sure I will not forget Charles was starring in a killer production of Kill Move Paradise on our stage. We were 24 hours away from our annual gala that, you know, we'd been planning for eight months. Um, and in a stroke of a couple hours that day, it, you know, it, it, it all, it all ended. Um, so we pulled the plug on our gala. We, uh, gathered the cast together and said, Hey, the performance you're about to do in an hour is the last one. Um, which is about the most depressing thing to, to say to a, a cast, especially just the amazing one that was Kill Move Paradise. Um, so it was like really a, a low point. And then a couple weeks later, like a bit of a high point because we found a way to resurrect Kill Move Paradise and, and move it online for four weeks. And suddenly people who missed it got to see it. And suddenly people who live out of state or out of country um, and family members of people associated with the show who never would have gotten to see it did. And so there have been like these happy accident moments like that that 
because of some innovation and some chutzpah, new things are taking place. I don't know, I, I may be wrong, but maybe even this web series you guys have has, has come out, out of, of this. So there's a lot of really exciting stuff of um, that has just always been a part of the Chicago theater scene. This spirit of like, well, hey, I'll gather some friends together and let's do it ourselves. Um, you know, that was how Timeline started. It was how so so many companies started. And, and I'm seeing seedlings of that uh, again. And that's really inspiring, uh, especially for someone who is now not the younger generation. <laughs> um, and that's really inspiring. But but then it's it's um, contrasted with with days where I, I frankly just get get really depressed because uh, I'm just like on the phone all day, you know, having to break news to people that projects they thought were going to be happening are, uh, you know, delayed at least. I can think I, one of the, I, go, oh, go ahead, Charles. I think one of the, I can't say good things, right. But like one of the saving graces of 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 right now is i'm finding a lot of of like a, a sense of like togetherness and understanding you know where it's just like these things are getting canceled everything is shutting down and it's like all oh, this this thing that's bigger than us that connects us all is affecting it and it's not just like a choice it's not an artistic choice to cancel or it's not like a you know uh something that that the artist did wrong so at least i'm taking solace in that how, where where are you pulling that from, PJ? Like that that energy of like, I'm on Zoom calls all day long, and like where are you where are you getting that fortitude? Where are you getting that like forward push? Oh man, that is an excellent question. Um, well, I'll be honest. Some some days uh, I'm losing the battle, <laughs> and, and and some days it's it's a, a little hard because. Uh, I've always been someone, and Charles, I know you're cut from similar cloth, like you want to see progress. You, you want to be able to demonstrate, oh, I'm, I'm achieving something. And that's just a little harder right now in this, uh, you know, feeling like the hamster in, in, in the wheel. Of like, oh my God, I'm working harder than ever before, but are we actually going anywhere? Uh, you know, um, you know, time has been around 23 years. I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not immune to working really hard and feeling challenges and having headwind. But, uh, but usually, even in tough times, you feel like, oh well, I see we're getting somewhere. Like, yeah, there are setbacks, but but we're still still moving moving the ball downfield, and and that's that's harder right now. So, but to try to be less pessimistic uh, about your your question, I, I'm getting. I'm getting inspiration, honestly, from from stuff like this, from connecting with people that um, either don't normally have the time to or haven't had the ability to. Um, literally just before I logged on with this, I was staring at, you know, a Zoom screen of like 30 leaders of Chicago theaters who were gathered together and putting their heads together about, you know, how to reopen and how do we use our collective energy to go to the city and go to the state and say, hey, we are a major force and economic driver and cultural asset. So here's what we need to be able to open our doors. This, these, these are tools that we need help with. So anyway, getting to be in a conversation with leaders, many of whom I know, some of whom I only know tangentially, um, uh, is, is is exciting and and thankfully and I don't know that this is the case in other major cities there already is a collegiality in Chicago that has made it easy and effortless it wasn't like oh I gotta you know we all gotta pick up the phone and introduce ourselves to you know other theater leaders like no th those relationships already exist and the League of Chicago theaters has already been kicking ass for for decades and so that's 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 where I get some inspiration is seeing like oh we're we're actually all pulling in the same direction. Do you think? I mean, do you think that that is 
also kind of what the world, I mean, the world, our community specifically, and we've been even blessed by the Chicago community being a specific community inside of a larger community, which is, you know, like you say, our colleagues and where other places people do need to do that, like lip service of I am me and I am from here. We don't, we have a shorthand. Do you think that this experience is a, like you, oh, you are also talking about having the experience of decades of work with timeline and being used to pushing kind of the boulder up the hill and seeing the progress, but there hasn't been anything like this in our industry, in our world, like this kind of unifier. And what do you think that does to, I mean, it's, it's that sense of shared experience and how, what does a shared experience look, look like when we're all experiencing it alone? Yeah, that's no, kind of a convoluted a, question, I think. But like, no, it's 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 a good question. I mean, and um, you know, anytime that there is something so seismic, um, you you recognize what you had been taking for for granted, whether they're just simple life luxuries um, that right now seem so damn simple. <laughs> um, uh, like or hugs. yeah yeah um uh or you recognize people uh people or or professions that you haven't appreciated enough not you know not necessarily that you take for granted but you maybe don't you know six months ago were we all really appreciating the the bagger at the grocery store like we are today that like i just want to like hug her or him and and say like are you well can i can i buy you a gift card to go to trader joe's and get yourself some wine because you you need you need some wine so um anyway there's there's those things that um you know post 9 11 is the only thing i can compare it to even closely and there's they're so not um, applicable, but, but it was, it was the only other time, um, I can recall that in my adult life and definitely in my time of timeline existing in time, it was really small in 2001, um, that, uh, that this type of seismic shift just made everybody, um, totally recalibrate. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I had this, I had this moment, and, and it's interesting that you bring up 9-11, because I don't know the number offhand, but it was literally earlier today where, you know, one of these tickers came into my screen of, you know, the death count in Illinois alone, and my brain actually went, how many people died in 9-11? Like, how does this compare to that, you know? And then as we're going live here, it came in my screen, like the death count of our country, and I'm like, that's, you know, it's... I, and after I read that, as we're all like waiting to go live, I'm thinking to myself, do I actually verbalize like how dark today feels to me? Like I'm in that, uh, to be transparent, like I'm in that lane. And this is, you know, I think Charles, you'd probably agree. Like we want this to be a space where it feels like having a happy hour with people that you know, and, and we want it to feel like that same way where you grab a glass of wine in the theater lobby with someone before you see the show. Like that we miss that that's the kind of thing where you take for granted the sense that you're like oh i'll meet you at the front bar or whatever you know like that kind of accessibility of community and i had that whole moment where i was like do i actually verbalize like how dark this shared experience feels when we're trying not not like going to the movies is avoiding the world that you're in and you've retreated for a while and so cocktails is but also that's the other element that charles and i were like well giving people a space to like talk about what their experience is. I'm like, but I think that's part of it is saying it's, it's a dark day. It's a, it's a dark day. You know, and I, you I, know. yeah, I, I, I would say yes. And to, to all of that and like be true to what this moment is that you're in. And, and hopefully in an hour later, you, you know, you might have some friend you haven't talked to in a while, reach out and you might be in a, a very different moment. You know, just yesterday I, I was on the phone um, with another great former Chicagoan, although I still think of her as a Chicagoan, um, Kimberly Senior, um, mm. uh, who now lives just outside New York, but um, has done some amazing work in Chicago, obviously, as, as a, a, a director. Um, and, 
And like the first thing she said is she's like, how are you doing? She's like, and I don't mean like big picture, like literally in this moment, this one moment. And I said, I love that you asked me that because that's kind of the only answer I can give you right now. I said, well, right now I just walked out into my backyard to call you and the sun is out. So this moment, I'm great. Two hours ago, I was not. And, and it's just taking things moment by moment and appreciating the, the happy moments and not being afraid to say out loud to yourself or to your loved ones when you're having a moment that you don't want to fake it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm glad that you, you raised that. Isn't that theater, you know? Yeah. Like, isn't yeah. that, that, that honest, unabashed reflection of society and what society is feeling, you know? Like the fact that you could turn around, look, what, as I was sitting here, I was looking down, I don't know if y'all saw, uh, one, of the, one of the puppies got out, you know? Uh, and so I'm just, I'm sitting here trying to, trying to keep this little thing together and quiet, but at the same time, this conversation. So it's like all at the same time, you know? It, it is, isn't yeah. that theater? You know, cry in one yeah. moment, laugh in the next. Yeah, and, and you know, like directors say to actors all the time, when you have a discovery, like follow it, see where it goes. It may go in the wrong direction or it may go in a direction you've never, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not really of the improv world, but, but a phrase that is used a lot in the improv world that always resonates with me is, you know, play, play the scene you're in, not, not the scene that you wish that, that, that you were in. Um, and, uh, and that's, that's something I've been saying to myself uh, a lot these days. And, and you know, not being afraid to be vulnerable to who you're talking to if you don't feel like faking it, um, but also really embracing the joyous moments when there's something cool, whether that's like, hey, I just baked some bread and I'm going to geek out over that, which I have been, by the way. Which I'm, I'm so glad you said, because I've been, I've been, I've been dying to ask you, PJ. Jess, I don't know if you you know this and I don't know if the folks out there watching knows this but like PJ is he's the man he's PJ is the it's not a lot of people listen it's I've not heard a rumor people. that he's the man but I want to know yeah. specifically why well it's not a lot of people that I like say okay cool you you can throw down in the kitchen you can you know you, you know your way around some pots and pans uh PJ is one of those folks that I PJ I don't know if I've ever given you that but I'll give no, it to you now don't, don't embarrass yourself or, or, or me for that matter. But I, I love to cook and, and part of the long list of reasons why I love Charles is we, we have a, a shared passion and, and kinship. And when he deservedly treated himself to a much needed grill recently, I took great delight in going online and sending him one of my favorite barbecue cookbooks and a paella pan to christen his his new new grill so we we have we have connection much appreciated so i think what that have you makes him making, the godfather man? of his grill is that right like pretty much he, he straight up said there comes yeah. a time when i'm gonna need a, ra a rack of ribs or two uh <laughs> yeah. So what have you been making, man? What's what's it's a, been yeah, it's a buy-in principle you there? Making some bread. Give me, give me, give me, um, give me the update. Trying new recipes, um, dusting yeah, off well, old I, recipes. I, I, I shot you a a, a picture uh, on Memorial Day of paella I was making outside on the grill. It was it was in the early stage, but I've been doing. I mean, now that it's finally nice out, I, I will I will try to cook meals outside as much as possible. But to be honest, like I, I, I cook outside even in the winter, like as, as long as it's above freezing and there isn't like snow coming down, like I, I, will, I will cook outside. And, and my wife and daughter appreciate that because it means that I'm not stinking up the house as, as much. Uh, are, which I, are, I, have you ever been a person, have you ever been a person that's done like a whole turkey for Thanksgiving on a grill or something like that? Oh yeah, every year yeah. actually. I've, I've, I've done a turkey on the grill probably for the last 12 years. 
And I'm, that's I'm, I'm so that's psychotic. Kind of grill mastering. I'm so impressed by that level of grill mastering because that feels like such a super commitment to cook a whole turkey on a grill. So that's impressive. I'm so psychotic that even the years that I didn't get to host, I will like bring a turkey to my sister's or my mom's and like commandeer their grill. And they're like, what are you doing? It's 30 degrees out. And I'm like, I'm cooking the turkey outside because I need your oven for, you know, all the side dishes. I'm telling you, it's great. Like and everybody. When you know, yeah, when you know how to cook a turkey on a grill, I'm sure other turkeys don't compare to that turkey. It's true. You just treat it like That's a, a fucking oven. Another. And then true. you've got your whole oven for your pies and your sweet potatoes and your stuffing and you're this and you're that. You're that. Yeah. I'm but telling you, Charles and I should have, have our own cooking web series. I think that, look, that might not be bad. Pots and cups. <laughs> I will say I so the the one unexpected thing of this shelter in place. Uh, I mean, I've loved cooking for for years, but I've never gone near baking. It's just I just never had the time for exact measurements, and and it's just I'm like that's why there are professionals, and just go go buy your bread from someone who knows how to cook a damn baguette. But I'm like I'm not going to touch that. But in these crazy times we're in. I've been baking bread probably like three times a week and yeah, doing crazy yeah. things. Some of it's been good. Some of it's been like, oh, that's why people study for years to bake bread. Okay, so I have to carry this question in from a previous conversation then. Are you a person that has a yeast starter? Is I that just, a thing in your world? I, it became a thing in my world just like a month ago um, when I was among those psychotic people who couldn't find yeast anywhere or flour anywhere. And again, things that I didn't think I needed four months ago. Um, but I found a great resource. So it's for anybody who's on the north side of Chicago, um, it's a great place uh, on Clark Street in Rogers Park, uh, just south of Pratt called Smack Dab. Um, Great I've sandwich plate. I've heard this. I've heard this. But and, go on. And uh, I have to give credit to Timeline's managing director, Liz Allman, who tipped me off on this, that uh, they're doing curbside you know, pickups, but you can also buy through their website flour, their bread flour, yeast, and sourdough starter that they, they will bring out to you. So I, I have been going there. Um, for the last couple months, getting getting all, all of that. And then I always just felt bad because I'm like, I can't just buy flour and yeast from them. Like I, I should buy a sandwich too or something. So I'm just not treating them like a grocery store and you know, want to give them some money. Um, but, but I've that's heard also that's like what other that's what other commercial restaurants have done is like they've made that pivot because they want to keep their agreements with their suppliers for when they open and then they have all these I, you know what I mean like I keep seeing those articles come into my feed too of like eggs and milk are being dumped and crushed and you're just yeah. like like you think of that butterfly effect like you know just like on the food economy side you know and how that works and you're just like of no, course it's, if you can make that true. pivot it, into like when you when you see meats. that there's you know not a lot of meat at the grocery store or that prices are understandably going up but then you find out like oh well all the chicago steakhouses are happy to sell you steak because they 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 have orders that they just want to keep um so i i haven't done that but never say never maybe that's mm. next after your sourdough starters it might be but yeah so this this going room I'm, I'm sitting rib. in where i feel like i've now spent room where I feel like I'm now spending uh, all of my, my, my time in, uh, which has become my home office, which pre-March 12th, my home office was just my laptop at our dining room table. And about, uh, you know, two days into shelter in place, my wife was like, yeah, no, this is not going to work. We're, we're going to order you a desk from Wayfair and assemble it. So anyway, so I've been holed up in here, but this, this room is sort of like a great uh, encapsulation of my freakishness because to the right are bookshelves filled with scripts and plays. And to the left, Charles has been in this room. And to the left are bookcases filled 
with cookbooks and recipes. So it's like my my yin and, and your yang. Your yin and yang. Yeah, there yeah. you go. My yeah. my day tonight. Well, I want to ask another question kind of in that ilk because I'm thinking about like the pre time and you floating at a dining room table, which is what I was doing too, until this became like the new normal. And you also talked about the pivoting of Kill Move Paradise into the virtual and that range. And I actually had the pleasure of tuning in for a virtual talk back um, on Zoom with you all. See, that's also, you might recognize me from such, such works as this. There you go. Right, yeah, see, now I look more familiar, right? Um, Loved your work. But um, thank you, you like my work? You're familiar with it, I see. <laughs> I'm very I proud of Bobby familiar. Head number one. Um, uh, but I, that prompts to me the thought of like creating space for work and this becoming what work looks like and reimagining work like as a theater producer, theater, you know what I mean? Theater professional. Where do you think that, this is like a three part question. Where do you think that, that this ingenuity is interesting where do you think that this ingenuity is taking away from what we can't recreate and where do you think that this is going to take us in the future even when we have the option of accessing spaces together once again now that this is the pandora's box has been open yeah. oh that is an excellent question that has occupied many many a zoom meeting today um and for the past few weeks but it's no it's it's excellent because there's there's again some happy accidents like oh yeah let's have a talk back online why it's not splitting the atom like why didn't we think of that before um because there are many people who might want to stay for a talk back after a show but maybe their friend that they came with can't has to get home um uh, to a babysitter or just can't or um you know any any number of reasons or people, something sits with them for a while and it may be two weeks later that they're still thinking about a show and they're like, well, I can't just show up for a talk back now. Um, so anyway, that that's was a happy accident. We ended up doing, I don't know, three or four online talk backs for Kimmel Paradise. Um, one of which had like a hundred people, um, which is insane. Like we don't have a hundred people. From British Columbia. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, you know, we're in the process of streaming now another show, a show from Timelines Past, played to Master the Art. Um, and we, by luck, had a great archival video of it um, from 2013. And so we're streaming that now. And like I did a web chat like this um, last week with the writer and director and star, and we had like 300 people sign up for it. And it was like, we never get to talk to 300 people, even when our lights are on. So there are some happy accidents that, that I hope will force, um, you know, some of us old stick in the muds to continue to innovate. But then there's some other stuff that I'm going to be so happy to chuck out the window. Like our, our art form is meant to be experienced live. And, and as much as I love and have been a part of um, some of this, like let's move live theater performances into a digital medium. Like they weren't created for that. They were not filmed for that. They weren't intended for that. That's one of the things that occurred to me because I've had the opportunity to watch that your show and another show. And one of the things that occurred to me in the middle of it is to, to, the, to the degree that they are good, they are good. But one of the things that we can't do is the choose your own adventure element of how I'm receiving this narrative, which is I want to check in with you or someone might be watching someone downstage and I want to see how that person's receiving it. Or, you know what I mean? That element of where your eye wants to go based on the story that you're receiving and how it's translating across multiple planes. And yeah. cameras are used by directors to navigate you to the story. And so you receive their perspective. And I think perspective, as far as how you engage with the narrative, is something that you can't really cater live theater in a way because you're telling us the story from a plainer way where it is, like you say, it's not 
produced with that kind of intrinsically at the idea of how you're receiving this narrative. So it's kind of hard to figure out how to adapt that for an audience in a two-dimensional realm when you're meant to be sitting in space and experience. And yeah, I, I've, so. I've also found in watching some, some other um, theater performances on, online, of just having to retrain myself for how to be an, an audience member. That, you know, if, mm. if I'm going into a theater, I'm turning my phone off, I'm being fully present, even if it's a show that I'm not into, I'm still fully present and you have my undivided attention. By nature of just comfort and habit, if I'm sitting on my couch, and I still want to watch this show and even paid to get the opportunity to stream this show, there still are just distractions in your house. Uh, you know, whether it's like, I, I did not sh power down my phone like I would if I'm in, okay. in the theater. So like the text comes in, like my eye might, might wander over there or, um, or in any number of, of things or- Or somebody you know, in my house asked for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right, yeah. Totally, totally. Um, yeah. You know, or or you're just you know accustomed uh, in just watching things online or on a DVR or on Netflix or whatever of like, oh, all right, this is a, all right, this is a scene change. I'm just gonna fast forward till we get back to the action. Like, mm -hmm. no, there's actually artistry in that scene change that there were purposeful things that designers and directors chose, and when you're watching it at home. Some of that is is just compromised. You don't have that like uh, community buy-in. You know, you don't have that like that audience community responsibility to to just be there and and be nowhere else. And also that energy that you get is is something that's completely like I haven't as an actor I haven't been able to find it anywhere else. You know, uh, yeah. just in the the work just from being on stage. You know, just being able to recreate that energy. Uh, I want to shout this out. Susan Cram uh, just said in, in the chat, uh, during one of the Apple family plays, I watched Janet put together the puzzle instead of the actor talking because Janet's reactions were so informative. <laughs> I love it. I love uh, it. That's like a yeah. Meisner's perfect seven, right? Just the activity. I want to, I want yeah, to switch she, gears a little bit and, and come off of, okay. go ahead. No, yeah, I was just gonna no, say please, that. Yeah, gotta, like Janet gotta... literally, did. she did a puzzle on stage every night, and and she 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 would get so sucked into it, she would sometimes forget that you know there were ninety nine people who paid to watch her do a play. She was like, "But I'm doing this damn puzzle." <laughs> <laughs> Truth to acting, I, I love, love her. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit. You got you 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 got a household. You got a like a cat, right? And you got a a. a uh, a beautiful wife, beautiful daughter, like, how's that going? I mean, you know, I, I got five puppies and a wife and a, and a dog over here. Uh, and I know sometimes it's, it's, you know, I get it's, ankle bites, you know? Uh, yeah, it's you not. Home? So yes, we have a cat named Flo, um, short for Flora. Um, I have a 13 year old daughter named Zoe. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't much enjoy seventh grade the first time when I was going through <laughs> it. I can't say I'm enjoying it anymore at home. Uh, uh, you know, but like talking to, to friends who have some kids who are younger and some kids who are, are older, like I, I'm, I'm not sure what I would rather have. You know, friends who have seniors in high school who just like, oh man, they've, they've lost those memories All that everybody has. Forever, yeah. um, but then friends who have kids that are you know under five and and the parents don't have the luxury of doing what I did today, which is just closing that door and being on Zoom for for eight hours. And so I I feel grateful and like a horrible parent that my daughter's been able to be pretty independent. Uh, but it it also sort of feels like it did when our theater was open then even though I haven't left the house, there's sometimes that I don't see my daughter's face until like 9 p.m. She'd be like, oh, have you been here all day? And I'm like, yeah, I've just been in there working. Uh, and she's like, what, 
wow, you work, you're working a lot. I'm like, no, I, I always do this. I just usually do it in another building. Uh, so it's, 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 uh, it's weird to, to navigate. It's also why I got kicked out of the dining room on day two of, of shelter in place. Cause it's like, no, we all, we all need our, our spaces. Do you yeah, we, we're having the, do you we have a conundrum. Tall? I don't know if you heard that. Oh, just, do you spread out or do you stack tall? Like in your papers and stuff, like, you know what I'm saying? Like on your desk, like, are you like spread out or are you like organized? I'm, I'm, I'm like a, a, a layered levels guy. So I got, yes, I got notes here and then like up on a printer that I also didn't have at home until a month ago. There's then scripts stacked there and then behind me on the chair, there's stuff. So I, I like a lot of levels and services so i guess that's but as long out, as but you know where everything is right i do as long as it's you know, yeah. it's organized up here <laughs> it's alphabetical up here yeah i think that's the tough thing for us over here is we have someone that's in between the two worlds of having the ability to self-organize and self-navigate and also like having the newfound freedom of a laptop that is in his room and a desk because we created a workspace and the, no, the now knowledge that the Google Classroom can be where you chat with your friends when class isn't happening. So we're like, mm. I set an alarm on his Alexa. And when this is all done, he needs to show me his writing assignment. He had one hour. I'm like, you have one hour, man, because there's been all that. You know what I mean? Like, it's that thing of what does, what does good parenting look like in the time of COVID? <laughs> you know, like everyone's it just trying really to survive, you know? And and, and what, what would parenting have looked like if there was not Google Classroom right now? Like, whew. Whew. Uh, uh, yeah, so a, a friend of mine texted me. It's okay. affirmed for me the fact me that I'm not, I'm not a homeschooler. Homeschooling is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just making a face a, at a friend texted me. Too much. That, it's not, it's, yeah. no that if it, if it seems like things are bad right now, just, you know, wait until this generation grows up, the generation that was homeschooled by a bunch of alcoholic parents. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, that, that, sounds, uh, that, that sounds a bit. <laughs> Everything's great. Everything's going fine. Oh me, oh You've my. come to that, that, that time in the night, PJ where we are going to fire off 20 questions or so. We, we don't really count. Uh, and these right. are questions that are not meant to be, I mean, they might get serious, but they're not really meant to be serious. They're meant to just come at you, first thing that comes to your head in a, in a sentence or so, answer it, uh, and then move on, you know? Cool. Jess, do you want to start us off or do you want me to start off? I will start us off. I don't know how you answer this in a question, but I think you can. Tell us an unforgettable moment you've had in your career. Boish. Um, okay, since uh, just because um, someone mentioned the Apple Family Place, so that was a great memory. Got to be uh, on stage. It was actually the last time I was on stage, so about six years ago, um, with the great Mike Nussbaum. And on stage, we all had to eat an entire meal every night. It was like a full Thanksgiving meal. And of course, you know, operating on a theater budget, it didn't taste good because we just had to make some crappy food every day. So we started to get creative and like each of us would like bring in a different chicken dish every once in a while. And so one night I brought in a chicken dish and it, it wasn't good. The show ends. We're not two steps off stage after curtain call. Like, it was so close that audience members could have still heard it. Two steps off stage, Mike Dustbaum turns me and he goes, that was the driest chicken I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> so there's, there's one thing I will never forget. And Mike Nussbaum can say anything he wants to and get away with it forever because he's Mike Nussbaum. Like, that was the cleanest Mike Nussbaum story I've been able to tell. <laughs> I'm guessing. Charles? All right, uh, I'm gonna go baking or barbecuing. Like, Barbecue. like, 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 not like, like uh, cakes baking, but like in the oven cooking. Barbecue. Okay. Period. 
full stop. Cool. Uh, would you rather live full time in an RV or full time on a boat? God, and death is not an option. <laughs> um, wow. Wow. <laughs> I guess an RV so I could drive to the wine store because um, on a boat. Yeah, I'll go R. Jeez, I'll go RV. Once you're out of wine, you're just out of wine. I'm waiting for on my wife. Boat. All right. Waiting for my Fair wife enough. to come, like running in and be like, "What? We're buying an RV? <laughs> We're getting an RV. Sweet. Let's drive across the country." Let's go for a road. Charles? Well, with that in mind, um, now you have that RV. What is the first state you are driving to? Wow. Um, I guess I would go west just because I really haven't spent much time west. Like, um, you know, I would, I would go to some of those mountainous um areas um yeah out west just because it's part of the country that i really don't know cool i'm going to ask you a timeline specific question timeline in the time of covid uh a member asks has the pandemic affected timelines plans for your new space Um, well, that's, so how, how many words do I have to, to, to answer? Um, uh, y yes and no. Um, we are absolutely still moving forward with our plans to move to, to Uptown. Um, we are still in the midst of, uh, designing that building every day. I'm spending, I don't even know how many hours a week. Um, thank God for Zoom. Uh, in meetings with our architects and, and our, our designers. So all that work is, is ongoing. Um, that said, obviously it's no surprise that um, the schedule will be delayed to some degree. Um, how much, I have no earthly idea. Um, you know, just the fact that we can't meet in person, that, that fundraising can't happen in, in person, that, uh, um, you know, those will mean some, some delays, but uh, the project is still still on track, still happening. Nice. We uh, all move at the speeds we can move at, given the speeds we're allowed. <laughs> right. Speaking yeah. of uh, theater and, and being on stage, uh, do you prefer to act, direct, or produce? Um. I guess I mean the way my life has has veered. It's it's pr producing. I you know acting was it for me. Um, and even when we started the company in 1997, acting was was it. But in the last mm, decade, I've done one play, um, and and I don't feel sad about that. Um, uh, so I I discovered this happy accident that producing was really um, exciting to me and, and as, as fulfilling. Uh, I'm sure the day will come uh, that I will find my way back to, to acting, but it's, it's, not what I, it's not what I wake up in the morning thinking about right now. It's, you know, I wake up thinking about producing and creating opportunities for other actors to shine and, and ways to move the, the company forward and, you know, had, had you asked my younger self that, I, I honestly like couldn't have imagined um, such a thing. But uh, you know, you follow your path where where it, it takes you, and and I, I followed a path that I did not anticipate. My question: Do you collect anything, and if so, what is it? <laughs> not really. As a kid, I collected baseball cards. I was, I, I still am an avid baseball fan. And as a kid, I was like psychotic. I, I mean, I still have some good cards that I hope someday I can, I don't know, send my kid to college with them or something. But uh, 
I, I don't know if they're worth anything, but I think I got some good stuff. But no, I'm not really a, a collector. I'm going to I'm going to steal that and I'm going to keep going with it. Uh Cubs or Sox? Cubs. Sorry. Sorry brother. I I know. Sorry. I'm I'm a huge Cubs fan. I this past Saturday I had all I actually still have because they have yet to refund them or even acknowledge that the game didn't happen. Uh was supposed to go up to Milwaukee to see the Cubs play in Milwaukee. Tickets I bought like back in February. Yeah, no, I'm sitting on like five, five Cubs games this summer, and no one has yet to acknowledge that they're just holding our money for games that I'm not going to get to go to. So, yeah. That's the bizarro land element right now of plans that haven't materialized. Um, mm -hmm. My question is, are there any movie quotes that you use on a regular basis? <laughs> Oh, I can't think of any um, profanity, but those aren't really quotes. Um, <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to steer us away from, uh, you know, the quick questions and, and maybe spend a, a couple of minutes uh, throwing some meat at this last question. Um, you are clearly with the work that you are currently doing with Timeline and have been doing with Timeline, even from its inception, uh, a master of, of uh, resilience and a master of innovation and a master of strategy. Uh, so with all of that experience, right, of, of, of helming your career and, the, and the, the company, what advice would you give to everybody that's out there watching that is uh, uh, needing to find a way through this moment uh, of uncertainty uh, until we get back to whatever the hell the next normal is gonna be. Like, what is that piece of advice? Mm. Wow, that's a good question. And thank you for the incredibly generous words. Um, uh, lean on those around you. Um, listen to them keep people around you who will be honest with you uh, including when it's saying things you don't want to hear um, you know I mean I've, I've always tried to operate in, in my role as artistic director um, with you know, always having an idea to put forth just to provide some, some leadership that others can respond or push back against, always having an idea to put forth, but always, always, always be ready, willing, and eager to have someone else in the room have a better idea. Uh, and find ways to invite that, to encourage it, to let it be known that just because I have an idea does not mean it is the idea. Um, and uh, I think in, in these times, that's, that's just become even more critical because nobody has the answers. No, nobody. Like, for me to say that I, I know the best path forward, I'm lying. Um, so to, to not be afraid to put stuff out there, um, but to solicit other better, different points of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it reminds me of and this I saying, wanna ask um, one, one closing thing too when you're done charles yeah i was just gonna say it reminds me of this saying uh know what you know and know that that is not nearly enough uh you know just yeah. i wanna i wanna ask because i know we can't necessarily know this and it's part of a question in the chat and part of a closing question is 
what what do we think season 2021 looks like for timeline and my partner question to that is how can we support timeline during the season as we look ahead into the next season if you give um, us action items, what does uh, that look like uh, I, 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 I might have more action items in about two and a half hours after, after um, I get done with my next meeting. Um, what, what does the upcoming season look like? Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, we're staying as nimble and flexible as, as possible. Um, you know, the plans that we had announced back in February are not going to take place as planned or as scheduled um, but we're staying committed to, to projects um, uh, at dates to be determined and trying to think about uh, you know first and foremost how to keep our people safe our people that are working with us our people that we're bringing in as audience members and if, if we can't assure that uh, then I, I don't know what the season is going to look like. If we can assure that in some form or fashion, um, we want to be able to find ways to to bring people together and 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 possibly benefit from the fact that our venue is is smaller. Um, you know, if we had an 800 seat theater and we were told, "Hey, you, you can't have more than 50 people in there," like it's a little hard to pay the bills and to have um, you know, an interesting evening of, of theater. When you have a, a space um, that normally seats 99, um, you know, if you can get 35, 40 people in there, we all have had unforgettable off-loop theater experiences in, in intimate settings. So, um, so anyway, we're, we're trying to think about ways to, to be, be nimble. Great. great. Well, uh, thank you. I, I you, you? you all are frozen on frozen. my end, so yes. I can't see you. But let's just go ahead and raise a glass. Yeah. Uh, Can we see each other? I think we're frozen. So this is kind of our blind goodbye, which is you kind of the theme of being uh, you, I can hear together. you, but you're frozen. Yep. Yeah, same um, here. So thank you. Well, we, we appreciate you, PJ, for being here, and we appreciate everyone for joining us. And uh, we know your time is valuable, especially as a, as a theater producer. I know that you're spread thin, so we thank you for carving out some of your evening to, to spend this time together talking and, and uh, sharing in community and conversations and cocktails. So let's raise a glass and toast to this time that we had together, and thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you guys for fostering the conversation and, and your question of how, how can you support the timeline? Just, you know, stick with us when we're back. Come see us. We'll be there with open, That's socially distant arms. Great. Let's toast Take to care, coming guys. back. How about that? Indeed. Cheers. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank see you, you all next week. Good night. Thank you.